Hello students, welcome to Paper 5 Taxonomy and Economic Botany classes. This is for 5th semester BSc students under Bangalore City University. Today we will talk about the salient features of the family Orchidaceae. This comes under Unit 2. Let's quickly go through what we had done in the previous classes. We had studied about the families according to Engler and Prandtl system of classification the characteristic features of monocotyledons, taxonomic hierarchy, systematic position and economic importances. Now the learning objective is to study the to study the distinguishing features locally available species and their economic importances. Especially, we will emphasize on the economic importance of the families. Students will be familiar with the unique characteristics and economically important plants belonging to each of the families that are going to be discussed. This is the basic outcome of the learning. Another outcome is acquire the skill of identifying and assigning plants to the respective families. Now, before we come to the main topic, let's discuss a little about Orchidaceae family. It is the largest family of flowering plants. It consists of like terrestrial, epiphytic or saprophytic herbs and is the most, um, second most widely distributed plants in the world after grasses. So let's start with the systematic position of orchidacy. It belongs to the class monocotyledony, order microspermy and family orchidacy or popularly known as orchid family. Distribution, as I have said, is the largest family of angiosperms. It is represented by about 900 genera and 25,000 species which are cosmopolitan in distribution. That means what? They are globally distributed. You can find the species all around the globe. In India, it is represented by 130 genera and over 800 species, which is nothing less, isn't it? 13 species having great variety of flowers in shape, longevity and beauty. The key characters of orchidacy are summarized here. Let's study one by one. They are perennial Herbs mainly found in warm and moist places. They are perennial in nature, epiphytes or saprophytes, maybe terrestrial. They are, you know, they are also found in dry or seasonally cold environments such as savannas and semi-deserts. They are also found in some rainforests and swamps also. Flowers are zygomorphic in nature, hermaphrodite, epigynous and resupinated. This is, please note, this is a very important feature of this family. Perianth six in two worlds, the posterior segment of the inner wall developed as lip or labellum. Presence of labium, column and rostellum are important rather very important features of this family. Stamens 1 to 2, 
one or two staminodes, pollen grains united into pollinia. Gynoecium is tricarpillary. Please note, tricarpillary inferior ovary, unilocular with parietal placentation. The fertile stamen is adherent to the style and forms column or gynostamium. Stigma, two or three lobed. That is bi or trilobed. Crutus capsule. Now coming to the salient features. Habit to start off with perennial, terrestrial, succulent, scapose herbs. Many are epiphytic or saprophytic in nature, sometimes climbers. You all know about this plant, vanilla? See, this diagram will give you an idea about the different parts of the orchidacy plant. If you note the number here and its corresponding labels, you will be able to form an idea as to how these plants look like. Right? Next we'll come to the roots. The roots are Tuberous, found in orchids, adventitious, fleshy, climbing or aerial. Now see, this diagram gives you a more better picture, a clearer picture about the various parts of this particular plant. See? Look at this picture very carefully. Follow each of the labels with the corresponding floral parts. The petal or lip or labellum is opposite the fertile stamen. See? The fertile stamen or stamens are one side of are on one side of the flower opposite the lip did you note this they are at the opposite side making the flower bilaterally symmetrical this makes the flower bilaterally symmetrical the pistil is in the middle of the flower all right Pistil is in the middle of the flower. Single anther is retained at the top of the column to form a cap-like structure. Now if we, the other parts you can see here, the stalk node, pseudobulb, envelope leaf, new buds are coming out over here. The peduncle, the flower. Please follow this diagram carefully. Now we will come to the stem. The stem is erect, sometimes climbing or trailing, annual in terrestrial forms. In perennial epiphytic forms generally, the stem is thickened into rhizome or pseudobulbs. These are the respective examples for pseudobulbs. Sometimes it bears aerial assimilatory roots. This is found in Geniophyllum. Leaf is simple, alternate, sometimes opposite or whirled. Usually fleshy, linear to ovate, sheathing bases are there, sometimes reduced to our chlorophyllous scales. Our chlorophyllous scales means what? Chlorophyll is absent in those scales. Then coming to inflorescence. Inflorescence is 
solitary or spy, raisins or panicle. Now look at the floral characters. Floral characters of orchid is very very important. Okay. Flowers are variable and peculiar. They are very beautiful. You know they are very brightly colored. Shape, size and color is very attractive. Often showy, bracteate, zygomorphic, bisexual or rarely unisexual, epigynous. Trimerous, mostly resupinate, that is twisted at 180 degree or upside down. Alright, inferior ovary makes it epigynous. Now see, we will come to perianth. Right? Tepals are six in number and they are divided into two worlds of three each. Outer three tepals represent the calyx part and are green in color. The inner three tepals are colored and they represent the corolla. They are dissimilar in nature. Fine. The Two lateral or are wing like the third posterior tepal, the two are lateral or wing like and the third posterior tepal is slightly modified, often projected basally to form a labellum or lip which is broad, shoe like, spursed, tubular strap shaped or butterfly shaped or variously branched. This shows the lip or labellum which we are talking about. These are the petals. This is the dorsal part, dorsal sepal. These two are also the sepals. Try to relate this with this one also. These are different diagrams given from different angles. Bas the basic framework is all same. Now we'll move on to the androecium part. Stamens are three in number which unite with the pistil to form a column. The gynandrium or gynostamium opposite to the labellum. Look at the column here. Functional stamen are two bithecus in trors, colon granular or coherent in each cell into one Two or four stalked pollen masses or pollinia. A connection between ovary and stamen is made by the beak like sterile stigma. Stigma is often two or three lobed, occupying almost the center of the column. Sometimes staminodes are also present. Next we'll come to the gynoecium. Tricarpillary, syncarpus, ovary inferior, unilocular with parietal placentation, rarely trilocular and exile placentation. It is seen in apostasia. Stigmas are three of which two are lateral and are often fertile. The third stigma is sterile forming a small beaked outgrowth. The rostellum lying in the center of the column between the anther and fertile stigma. In cypridium and paphiopadium 
all the three stigmas are functional please remember these two are examples where all the three stigmas are functional normally what did we discuss out of the three two the two lateral ones are fertile and the third one is sterile but in these two both are I mean all three are functional rostellum is what rostellum is a flap of tissue covered with sticky stigmatic fluid it actually functions to separate the stigma and the anther in primitive uh, it's for your knowledge I'm telling in primitive orchids you know the pollinia with that contains many pollen stick to the stigmatic fluid on the insects backs because the orchids contain no rostellum but in advanced orchids pollinia Corticles are already attached to the rostellum. A portion comes off as a sticky pad known as visidium. Now, fruit. Fruits are dry capsules. They are small, numerous, dust like seeds that lack an endosperm. They are normally dispersed by wind the seeds depend on fungus since the fungus penetrates the seed and provides it with nutrient to germinate and grow they are small very light in weight and are non endospermic in nature Orchids uh, contain several types of nectaries including the extra floral types. Floral fragrances are diverse from quite sweet to the smell of rotting liver. Sometimes uh, nectaries are also located on the side lobes of the lip and uh, secretion along the grooves of the lip is also noted. Pollination is entomophilus. This is the floral formula. Try and correspond, try to match it with the floral diagram. Please keep on practicing floral diagrams with the floral formula to get a clear concept of the family characters. Now we'll move on to the economic importances of orchidaceae family. They are used mainly as ornamentals to promote aesthetic beauty in our environment. Their sweet extracts can be used in manufacture of perfumes. Orchids are often used as food in Indonesia and have orchids are known to have great medicinal importances. They are used as uh, medicines in China and Japan. Tuberous uh, roots of Habenaria. Susanne and Orchis latifolia are used as food. The capsules of vanilla panifolia, uh, planifolia yield commercial vanilla for flavoring agent for chocolate and confectionaries. Medicinal uses are also very famous as I've just said countries like China and Japan they extract medicine from this family. The rootstocks of uh, Eleuphia are used as vermifage. Dye extraction is also an important commercial application for this family. The leaves of uh, Calande contain a glycoside indican which on hydrolysis yield indigo blue. 
ornamentals as I've said they are used widely as ornamentals by owing to their color beautiful shape okay. commercial orchids are ornamentals like cyperi cypripedium it's known as lady slipper commonly epidendrum habenaria Oncidium, Vanda, Vanilla, Odontoglossum, all these. The common plants of these families are listed over here. You need to learn a few of the common plants available in this family. Be very particular while learning the scientific names. You will have to learn it correctly with correct spelling because a uh, wrong spelling for a scientific name is considered incorrect. Please also try to learn up the names along with their types like Acampe and Vanda are epiphytes, then Catlia are cultivated for showy flowers. Corallorzia are saprophytes. Vanilla are cultivated for their flavors in confectionaries. New has huge importance in confectionaries. Cypripedium is also known as ladies slipper orchid. Please note these names as well so in a nutshell what did we learn today we have learned that orchidaceae is one of the largest family it has it is widely distributed all throughout the globe we have learned about the presence of velamen tissue and in flower we have come across two important words labellum of the lip and recipination that twist of 180 degree at the back. Now, before we conclude, we will try answering some multiple choice questions. Okay, let's see if we can answer this. Labellum in orchidacy comes to the anterior side by twisting of the ovary through 180 degree. This process is called Let's see what is it called. It is not adnation, you know, it is not articulation. It is not attenuation, it is resupination. Velamen is present in, let's see what is the answer. You know these three cannot be. It is present in hanging roots. The androecium and gynoecium is fused to form a common structure called, what is it called? Gynandrium. Finally, these are the references. Thank you so much.